Today on Beers TV, if you want to get lighting right on your reef tank, but no idea how spectrum and these LED sliders affect your corals, what good looks like, and how to get this done right the first time, all that's coming up. Hey, this is Ryan with Beers TV's Master Reef Tank Lighting Mini Series. Set it and forget it lighting tools for perfecting coral coloration, growth, and health. In episode two, we mastered spread. This is episode three where we dive deep into spectrum and effectively master that as well. Spectrum is a big conversation, so we're gonna split it into two. This week, how spectrum choices affect the metabolic health of corals. In last week's spread episode, we shared that light is where 90% of coral's energy comes from, and getting this right will have a significant return on the time put into it. However, the catch here is light is not all equal. Corals have evolved to utilize very specific spectrums or wavelength of light more efficiently than others, and some spectrums will likely trigger both desirable and undesirable metabolic changes within the corals that we care for. The real challenge with spectrum is the limited guidance on how to use our LEDs. What little is universally agreed upon really only applies to a specific coral and doesn't actually apply to an entire tank full of corals. Until recently, even the manufacturers of most reefing lights were unwilling to go on record to any specific approach to spectrum was right, which resulted in the Wild West leaving us to our own devices, just flipping switches to the eye and buying tools without understanding if they're really the right tool for the right job. Today we end that, it's time to dare greatly in 80-20 this spectrum question, meaning I believe we can achieve 80% of the results by sharing the 20% that really matters and is generally agreed upon. With that information, we can not just get the right tool for the right job, but install and configure them correctly for the best results. It's time to share why spectrum matters, what getting it right looks like, and how we can do that with today's LED tools. There are two main reasons getting spectrum right matters. First, that blue peak that most corals receive a majority of their energy from. However, even though they both look blue to the eye, a subtle change in the hue of that spectrum, say 25 nanometers to the right, can potentially provide a small fraction of the energy to the corals, simply because the coral has not evolved to use that spectrum range efficiently. Something that will become easy to see in just a moment. Second, supportive spectrum peaks, these can trigger or alter metabolic functions, which can change the way that corals regulate photosynthesis, can certainly change the color and fluorescence of the coral. Something that changes between each different coral type, so it's less about the perfect answer and more about understanding what the levers are, what they do, and making informed decisions and observations. Understanding why things happen or what's possible makes it much easier to spot, recreate, and share it with others. So this is what spectrum looks like done right, that 80-20 of achieving 80% of the results in a reef tank without getting your doctorate in marine biology, starting with outside of looking nice. Why is the foundation of all the best approaches to reef tank lighting based on providing a peak of blue light? There's one thing you'll notice about every single reef tank halide and T5 bulb ever made. They all have a large blue spectrum peak around 435 to 450 nanometers, which looking at the spectrum chart is that blue light. This 435 to 450 peak is what decades of results in actual reef tanks is founded upon. In fact, the most popular reef tank lighting source of all time, the ATI Blue Plus T5 lamp, is pretty much just that, a wide peak of blue light covering 400 to just over 500 nanometers. As long as your light source has that broad spectrum approach to this blue range, you can support the metabolic needs of corals. I can say this with 100% certainty because of the decades of success lamps like the ATI Blue Plus demonstrated in home reef tanks, but also decades of success in aquaculture facilities which have achieved scalable growth and coloration and has been consistently achieved using lamps like these. Okay, so why is that blue spectrum range important? And better yet, why would a broad or wider approach to that range likely result in easier to achieve consistent results in our reef tanks? That starts with the basic understanding that the corals receive all that energy from a symbiotic algae that lives within the coral's tissue known as zooxanthellae. The zooxanthellae harvest light to meet the coral's energy and carbon needs. So it's actually the zooxanthellae that have evolved to utilize certain spectrums or wavelengths of light much more efficiently than others. I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear that it's the blue end of the spectrum that they utilize the most efficiently. However, it's one layer deeper where spectrum truly comes in. How does that zooxanthellae produce that energy? It's predominantly a result of chlorophyll and accessory or supporting pigments ability to absorb light and transfer it to the zooxanthellae. Understanding the supporting science of this is just looking at three charts, where chlorophyll A, chlorophyll C2, and carotenoids best absorb light. 
chlorophyll A starting to run that near UV range of 380, but peaking near 450 nanometers. You can start to see why even though the light's still blue, past 450 nanometers, many corals will utilize the light much less efficiently. Looking at this range where chlorophyll A best utilizes light, it's easy to see why the ATI Blue Plus performs so well. And if we're only concerned about coral health, why optimizing for that 380 and 450 range will produce the desired result. Taking that one step further, if we look at the supportive or accessory pigments with chlorophyll 2 and carotenoids, which actually transfer much of the energy they absorb to chlorophyll A, it becomes even clearer. Chlorophyll 2 also has a very sharp peak around 450 where it can absorb and transfer light most efficiently. And the carotenoids have a very wide range from about 380 all the way to 500 and into the green range. When you lay these three supportive spectrum requirements over each other, it becomes obvious why a broad blue spectrum approach will produce the best results with the widest array of corals, and even why the ATI Blue Plus bulb has performed so well. In fact, why we believe the Blue Plus bulb is the current gold standard to reference against in all of Randy's BRS TV Investigates LED lighting episodes. For those of you that picked this up and are wondering, all those chlorophyll and carotenoid spectrums seem to share one peak at around 450. Could we just optimize to that and be okay? The answer to that is it might be okay and provide the minimum requirements. Provided time and prolonged stability, corals will adapt to a wide variety of environments. That 450 peak is actually the same as the royal blue channel of most LEDs. However, corals have evolved over a millennia to different ranges in that broad blue spectrum range and utilize different ends or peaks of the blue spectrum more efficiently than others. At least partially due to the coral's own fluorescence or color pigments, and very likely related to the depths the individual corals are found at, how the water filters out many of the spectrum ranges, and what spectrum that specific coral is exposed to naturally. Sensor tanks are often filled with corals from all over the world, collected from different environments, depths, and types of coral, rather than attempting to optimize to a specific coral or force it to adapt from its preferred spectrum range to another, the broad blue spectrum approach will meet the needs of the widest array of corals and I believe the best collective results. Now on to the second question, can specific spectrum peaks affect corals beyond simply just providing for their energy needs? The answer is absolutely. Peaks like UV, violet, green, orange, or red can alter metabolic functions, coloration, and fluorescent pigment production. However, this is where that doctorate in marine biology comes in. Also, what we learn about a single coral often only applies to that specific coral or type of corals, and you could spend a lifetime researching this. So for the home reefer, this is more about making informed, often conservative decisions, implementing them, and then sticking to them for prolonged periods of time, then sharing with the community in the pursuit of not perfection, but knowledge of how all this comes together. Just for general guidance, there are some commonly believed ways that spectrum affect corals. The near UV and violet range is commonly believed to affect the production of fluorescent proteins or ratio of fluorescent to non-fluorescent color proteins in the coral. Meaning increased or decreased exposure to near UV and violet lights can change the visual color of the coral. The challenge here is it won't do that with all of them. This is very likely one of the many reasons why coral may have one color when you buy it and over time morph into something completely different in your tank. If you want to experiment with this, I do have a few suggestions. One, many LED lights say they have a near UV or violet channel, but it's barely measurable or underrepresented. So I'd consider a light source which has significant intensity within those near UV and violet channels. You can also consider supplementing with ATI atinic T5s, which peak around that 425 violet range. Second, beyond just intensity, you can actually consider length of time these channels are on to increase or decrease exposure. In any case, if you're going to explore this, I'd set them up and run that way consistently for 6 to 12 months to make a real decision. Almost every seasoned reefer will advise that stability is the most important factor to achieving the best coloration. Another consideration is that orange to red spectrum. Because seawater filters much of the red spectrum out, many corals are actually not accustomed to strong red spectrum peaks. In fact, I've seen studies that suggest exposure to red spectrum is how corals gauge how intense the sun is and regulate photosynthesis down when exposed to intense red spectrum peaks. Because of those two factors, the jury's still out on red spectrum, but most reefers will use red fairly conservatively. Okay, so this is how we take all this information related to our LEDs and reef tanks and setting them up properly. Most LED modules designed for reef tanks have what's commonly referred to as a royal blue channel, which is the very thin peak around 450. 
Not surprising since that's where many of the coral's light needs intersect. The thin Royal Blue Peak is much more limited offering than that broad approach that we've been talking about. But as we mentioned earlier, that thin Royal Blue LED peak could likely support the minimum energy requirements of many corals in our tanks. Many of the older or entry level LED modules on the market have taken that narrow band approach to keep costs down. But again, you could actually supplement those options with T5s like the ATI Blue Plus or Atinic for a broader approach to that blue spectrum range. However, most of today's better LED sources are able to emulate that proven broad blue spectrum approach with the addition of near UV, violet, light blue, and cyan channels. You can see what happens here when you add these channels to the royal blue, expanding the offering to cover most of that 380 to 500 range that we've been discussing. Some come in very close to emulating the blue plus bulb, others with heavier, lighter approaches to the violet, light blue, and cyan range. That approach to the wide or narrow blue spectrum is something that I'd check before I buy an LED. Spectral quality is one of the most important factors. I wouldn't buy a $20 T5 bulb without knowing the spectrum I'm offering, and I certainly wouldn't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in advanced LED lighting without knowing the spectrum beforehand. In terms of getting that right ratio of near UV, violet, royal blue, light blue, and cyan LEDs, and adjusting to create that right blue peak, there are three options. The first is just assume the manufacturer understands an application like reefing and has the right ratio, spectrum, and bin of LEDs, and just wing it by sliding all the blue channels to max. Then add all your white in until it looks good to the eye, and then adjust the green and red LEDs, or even the violet and cyan colors to the eye. Once you have that ratio down, scale them up and down together to meet your tank's power goals. This path is the most common, but it has some obvious challenges because no one owns a $3,000 spectrometer at home to check their work. There's a lot of trust here, just kind of winging it and hoping for the best. I will say that some of the better lights out there have done all this work for you already. The most obvious being the Kessel 360X. They have that blue peak that's nearly identical to the ATI Blue Plus, even the most difficult to replicate violet side. I've not seen any other manufacturer come this close to replicating the ATI Blue Plus bulb and does it out of the box with no effort. For the most part, this blue peak is also locked down and doesn't allow you to mess it up, which is pretty valuable. There are near UV, violet, red, and green tweaks you can make to the light, but you can't mess up the blue spectrum mix. People frequently ask why I use this light so often, and a proven lockdown spectrum mix is one of them. The Radeon G5 Blue does this in a different manner, which is designed out of the box to run all channels at max for their proven AB plus ratio. Then the only adjustment is the intensity slider, which scales them up and down together. This option does leave a bit more options for tweaking to the final color to the eye as well. The third option is just check out Randy's BRS TV Investigates on the specific light. He's measuring all the channels for you with our spectrometer and then the team's knowledge to produce a working spectrum mix that you can use and know what you're getting. That BRS recommended spectrum mix, the best guidance we can provide. Another consideration all this is spectrum blending. Unlike the historical gold standards of T5 and halide lamps, which emit a very blended spectrum from a single light source, LEDs are all single bands of light that need to be blended together. I believe that inadequately blended or focused beams of spectrum have been one of the more hidden, but biggest challenges that LEDs have had in their initial years or even decades. Our eyes often can't see it, but when spectrum is poorly mixed, the corals are getting blasted with intense beams of specific wavelengths, often focused through the water's ripples, which are effectively lenses. In this case, Randy also shows how many of these lights perform in this regard with that dynamic spectrum test, and it's worth watching on the LEDs that you're considering. In fact, it would change the way I'd use a light for sure. The lights that perform the best, often those like Kessel, which have all those LEDs under a single lens, or those that use various forms of diffusers, I'm comfortable with mounting them fairly close to the water. Lights that perform poorly in the dynamic test, I want to mount them 12 to 16 inches off the top of the tank to blend the spectrums. Mounting them higher spreads out the intersecting lights, reduces the spotlight of spectrum, and compensates for the less than ideal performance here. In any case, narrow, wide, perfect, or less than so, the corals will always have to adapt to a somewhat new environment in our tanks. It'll never be exactly the same to what they encounter in the wild or even someone else's tank. Lucky for us, corals are amazingly adaptive creatures, so given stable, healthy conditions, most corals will adapt to variations within the blue spectrum in our tanks. The most important factor in allowing corals to adapt is stability. They will not do well if you decide to change the light spectrum mix and intensity source frequently. I suggest not changing it more than once a year. Better yet, use the information shared today and set up your light the first time right and then don't touch it.
The obvious missing piece of all this is spectrum also means something to the human eye. As much as I want the corals to be healthy, I also want the corals to look awesome, have the display pop with color. So the next component of spectrum is what does each of these bandwidths of spectrum do to the visual look of the tank? This much I can guarantee, it's not what you thought, and the tank will look better than ever if you make some simple tweaks. All that found in our master reef tank lighting playlist right here.